you know. And, uh, and when I began to look at it that way, I realized that wars are fought by, you know, by evils on both sides. You know, one is a little more evil than the other, but even though you start in a war with sort of good intentions, we're gonna defeat fascism, we're gonna do this, you end up being corrupted, you end up being violent, you end up killing a lot of innocent people because you've decided from the beginning that you're right and then you don't have to ask questions anymore. That's an interesting psychological thing, that you, trick that you play. Say, well, you start out, you, you make a decision at the very beginning. The decision is, they're wrong, I'm right. Once you have made that decision, you don't have to think anymore. <laughs> then anything you do goes. Anything you do is okay because you made the decision early on that they're bad, you're good. Then you can do here, then you can kill several hundred thousand people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Then you can kill a hundred thousand people in Dresden. It doesn't matter, you're not thinking about it. Yeah, war, war corrupts uh, everybody you know, who engages in it. So, uh, uh, what else can I say about war? Lots of things. But I took out my watch, presumably, because I care, and I don't, but I, I uh, no. you know, people will present you with humanitarian wars. Oh, this is for a good cause. The thing about wars is the outcome is unpredictable. The immediate thing you do is predictable. The immediate thing you do is horrible, because war is horrible. And if somebody promises you that, well, this is horrible, like, you know, we have to bomb these hundreds of thousands of people in Japan. Uh, this is horrible, but it's leading to a good thing. The truth is, you never know what this is leading to. You never know the outcome. You never know what the future is. You know that the present is evil, and you are asked to commit this evil for some possible future good. Doesn't make sense. Especially since if you look at the history of wars, you find out that those so-called future goods don't materialize. You know, the future good of World War II was, oh, now we're rid of fascism, now we're gonna have a, a good world, a peaceful world. Now, the UN Charter, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 50 million people died in World War II, but now it's gonna be okay. Well, you've lived these years since World War II. Has it been okay? Uh, can you say that those 50 million lives were, uh, yeah, had to be done because, because of what? Uh, no, the wars, violence in general, is a quick fix. It may give you a, a feeling that you've accomplished something, but it's unpredictable in its ends. And because it's corrupting, the ends are, are usually bad. So, okay. I won't say anything more <laughs> about war, uh, and uh, you know, of course, it wastes people, it wastes you know, wealth. It, it's an enormous, enormous waste. And so, what does that to do? We we need to educate ourselves and other people. We need to educate ourselves in history. History is very important. That's why I I went into a little history because. It, you know, if you don't know history, it's as if you were born yesterday. If you were born yesterday, then any leader can tell you anything. You have no way of checking up on it. History is very important. I don't mean formal history, what you learn in the classroom. No, the history that you learn, go to the library. <laughs> go, yeah, go, you know, go to the library and read, read, learn, learn history. Yeah, we have, so we have, we have an educational job to do with history. We have an educational job to do about our relationship to government, you know, uh, and, uh, and to realize that disobedience uh, is essential to democracy, <laughs> you see. Yeah. And it's really important to understand democracy is not uh, the three branches of government. It's not what they told us in junior high school. Oh, this is democracy. We have three branches of government, uh, kiddos, <laughs> uh, the, the legislative, the executive, judicial. We have checks and balances. Uh, we balance one another out. 
If somebody does something bad, it will be checked by another. Wow, what a neat system. Nothing can go wrong. <laughs> well, uh, those structures are not democracy. Democracy is the people. Democracy is social movements. That's what democracy is. And, and, and what, what history tells us is that when injustices have been remedied, they have not been remedied by the three branches of government. <laughs> They've been remedied by great social movements which then push and force and pressure and threaten the three branches of government until they finally do something. Really, that's democracy. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, no, we mustn't be uh, pessimistic, we mustn't be cynical, we mustn't think we're powerless. We're not powerless. That's where history comes in. If you look at history, you see people felt powerless and felt powerless and felt powerless until they organized and they got together and they persisted and they didn't give up and they built social movements where there was the anti-slavery movement or the black movement of the 1960s or the anti-war movement in Vietnam or the women's movement. They started small and apparently helpless. They became powerful enough to have an effect on the nation and on national policy. But we're not powerless. Uh, we just have to be persistent and patient, not patient in the passive sense, but patient in the active sense of having a kind of faith that if all of us do little things, well, if all of us do little things, at some point uh, there will be a critical mass created. Those little things will add up. That's what has happened historically. Uh, people were disconsolate and people thought they couldn't end, but they kept doing, 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 and then something important happened. And I'll leave you with just one more thought. That if you do that, if you join some group, if you join whatever the group is, a group that's working on, you know, gender equality or racism or immigrant rights or the environment or the war, whatever group you join or whatever little action you take, you know, uh, it will make you feel better. <laughs> it will, will make you feel better. The, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not saying we should do all these things just to make ourselves feel better. But it's good to know that the life becomes more interesting and rewarding when you become involved with other people in some great social cause. Thank you. Legendary historian Howard Zinn speaking at Binghamton University, upstate New York, just after the election on November 8th. Howard Zinn is author of, among many other books, People's History of the United States. That does it for today's broadcast. If you'd like a copy of today's show, you can go to our website at democracynow.org. Democracy Now! is produced by Mike Burke, Shreve Abdokadu, Saren Mate, Anjali Kamat, Steve Martinez, Nicole Salazar, Hani Massoud, and Robbie Karen. Mike DeFilippo, Miguel Nagera, and Peter Curries are our engineers. Special thanks also to Becca Staley, Nick Gila, Hugh Grant, Samantha Chambly. Angie Kiefer, Jay Sal Noor, Julie Crosby, Karen Renucci, Isis Phillips, Neil Shibata, John Randolph, Jose Miranda, Travis Collins, Vesta Godars, and Rabia Afghani. Again, our website, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.